משנה צולה לרמב״ם, זכרו לברכה, הלכות עבודה זרה וחוקות הגויים, פרק ב', הלכה יוד והלכה וואו. כל המובע בעבודה זרה שהיא אמת. A Jew who agrees, who uh, claims, who states that uh, any particular form of, of Avodah Zarah, foreign worship in, in general, is, is true. Afal Pishelo Avodah, even though we haven't seen him actually worship it, although you might assume that if he says this, then he might also worship it, but you don't have to see him actually uh, performing any of the specific acts of of Abu Dhazara, uh, of that particular type, such as bowing down to a, an image or, or something like that. Anyone who makes such a claim, This is equivalent to cursing and disparaging uh, the name of Hashem. By, by admitting or claiming such a thing. In other words, these two actions of e- either <coughs> worshipping Abu Dhazara or uh, cursing and disparaging Hashem, they, both of these actions have have the same carry the same uh, weight and significance. That Pasuk is speaking about Abu Dazara. So we see the Pasuk itself makes this clear connection. לפיכך, דאפו, תולים עובד עבודה זרה כמו שתולים את המרדף ושניהם נסכלים. And, the, and therefore, the, uh, they are both dealt with in the same way. They, they are uh, stoned and hanged. ומפני זה, כוללתי דין המרדף ללכות עבודה זרה. And for this reason, I have included this category uh, of פידוף. Uh, here in Ilkhot because a person who curses Hashem must be must be some kind of kofir, some kind of uh, apostate. You could even perhaps you could even perhaps claim that uh, sometimes such a person might not be an actual kofir in the sense that. And he denies the existence of Hashem, but he can be a moreth b'malchut, so to speak, in the in a, in a in some kind of strange psychological uh, twist of the mind. In other words, he says, "Yes, Hashem is there, but I I hate him." That's for Shalom, and I'm going to uh, curse him or what have you. That, that nevertheless, he's still a, he's still a megadef, even even though he may claim that he believes in the existence of 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 the of the bore of Hashem, whatever it may be. But usually, normally, a person who acts in such a way uh, does not believe at all. So he's a kofir be'ikar. That is usually the case. And the, the, these are the, uh, the halachot that we need to discuss regarding the mechadef. So this is now Halakha Yod Beth, as you can see. En ha-mughadef, I'll mark it out here. En ha-mughadef hayav sekhila ad shi-yifaresh et Hashem ha-miyuchad shel arba ufiyot. Shehu alef, dalet nun yod. In other words, in order to qualify, so to speak, to, to have transgressed this particular avera, to have performed this action, this act of giduf, one has to mention Hashem's name explicitly. We varechotho, which of course is a euphemism, which means, to, in other words, to curse rather than to bless. We varechotho b'shem min ha-shemoth shenam nimchakim. The 
these uh, names are mentioned in Ilkhot Yisada Torah, Perek Shishi. I think we, we saw this in the past. <clears throat> we'll just quote them briefly now. Here in, in Perek Shishi, perhaps well, maybe I'll call it up in just a moment. In Perek Shishi of Hilchot Yisrael Atzara, which you should be able to see now, it says, "Kol ma'abed Hashem in Hashemot Hakedoshim Hatohorim," a person who erases, destroys uh, the name of Hashem that has been written down. Any of the seven names, as we're about to see, "Shenikra Bahem Chodesh Baruch Hu Lokam in Hatzara." Such a person is Chayav Malkuyot Min Hatzara. We are commanded to destroy Abu Dazara. And then it says in the same Pasuk, We must not do the same vis-a-vis Hashem. There are seven such names. There are seven such names. So that's the uh, Yod Hey Vav Hey. Okay. So he has to mention when when uh, the, the, the Megadev has to mention one of these names. So, Sekila has to do with the Shema Miyuhad. And with regards to the others, the other names. The, the, he, he's, uh, there is an Isur, Miswath Lot Ta'ase, but not Hayav, but the person is not Hayav Sekila, uh, not, not uh, to be stunned. We yesh Mishem Faresh, Sheno Hayav, Ela Ala, Shem Yod Hei, Wal Hei. There are, there is an, an opinion, says the Rambam. There is another opinion. Yesh Mishem Faresh, Sheno Hayav, Ela Ala, Shem Yod Hei, Wal Hei, that the person is only Hayav Sekila. If he mentions the name of Hashem, Yod Hey Well Hey, and not Aleph Dalad Nun Yod, well, I mean, but my view is, says Rambam, Shad Shanehem Hu Niskal, that in both cases he is to be his Chayav Sakila. Yes. Practically speaking, how would a Beth Din assess if somebody uh, cursed Hashem uh, with the Shema Mufarash, since we presumably don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, that's a, that's a good point. Once, but this was not always the case. Uh, there were there were times when it was uh, it was uh, known, certainly more widely known. Um, today, there might be a, a good a, a room for doubt whether whether it's possible to. Claim that a person actually transgressed this this uh, prohibition. Okay, so uh, by the way, it should be mentioned that what Rambam says here, Rani Omer Shal Shanehem Huniskal. There is no clear and obvious makor source for this claim of Rambam. And Rambam himself admits this in a letter. Where he's asked about this to uh, Rabbi Pinahas Haddayan. Uh, he himself says this. What you do see, however, and it's, it's worth mentioning this, I think that. Uh, <clears throat> when a hacham 
perceives something to be to be the case. It's clear in his mind that this is how it, how it must be. Then that is how it must be. In other words, it is reasonable and and not unusual, as we see here, for a chacham to to state this this is the halacha. And, um, <clears throat> it, is, it is it is clear that uh, this is the halakha that the chacham will state this is the halakha even though he hasn't got an ex an explicit um, source because as the Hazanish writes uh, in Yoradei as I recall um, the halakha is that which appears to the hacham who is, is has to respond to a particular situation. The halakha is as it as it appears to be based on uh, his iyun, his his uh, study and his investigation of the matter based on all the material before him. That which appears to him to be the halakha, that is the halakha. In other words, the, the essential definition of halakha, as we see this, and this is a good example here, the essential definition of, of, of halakha is that which a chacham tells you is the halakha. It's not, the, the definition of halakha is not what a, a particular book states. It might be entirely true what that book states. It also might not be quite so true. Or it might be a possibility, but not, not the only possibility. So uh, those who say... Uh, the halakha is whatever is written in this book or in that book or or what people do or something like that. Uh, that's not technically speaking. Uh, that's not precise. In fact, it, it, it can be quite misleading. The real definition of halakha is that which hachmei Torah understand based on sources before them to be the halakha. That is the halakha. Something similarly you can find in... Uh, in, in more than in many cases, you can see amongst the Rishonim uh, find such things as the following. Uh, sometimes the Tosafot will will uh, write, for example, that uh, such and such an isur, shall we say, or such and such a concept or miswa, what have you, is is not minhat Torah. It's midivrei sofarim. Why? Because the limud of the from of this concept, which is from a particular pasuk. Is an asmachta. Well, is it one hundred percent certain in all cases that it's an asmachta? Maybe it's uh, limud. What what, what uh, Rishonim refer to sometimes as the limud gamur. Maybe it's, it's mamash from the pasuk. It's not an asmachta. Discerning between that which is a, a limud gamur and that which is an asmachta, that which is directly derived from a pasuk and carries therefore the the weight and, and is defined as minat Torah and that which is defined as loosely based on a pasuk as a kind of uh, hook on which to to hang this this concept but it's not the straightforward meaning of the pasuk and is and therefore this halakha is not to be considered minat Torah and therefore it's midivrei sofarim and it's called an as the limud is called an asmachta. That uh, distinction is not always one hundred percent clear. There are cases where one rishon will tell you this is minat Torah. They said they learned it from the pasuk. It's a definitely a limud gamur. And another rishon will tell you mapitam. That's that's an asmachta. But based on, based on such an understanding, based on on, on uh, that distinction that the Chacham arrives at in his own mind, based on everything he sees and understands, then that Chacham will go on to regard that limud as either minat Torah or an asmachta, uh, and and wherever that takes you, so to speak, halachically, he will follow that that conclusion. So, so that again, 
stresses the point that the halacha is that which appears to a hacham to be the halacha. That, that is that is the the most precise definition of halacha, really that one, that one can uh, that one can achieve. Obviously, there are many things that everyone will agree to. Um, and, and and admit that this this is definitely the, what the Torah states. This is the halacha, and there'll be no discussion. But uh, there will be other uh, topics where that is not the case, and it might be uh, might be a mahaloket. All right, we we shall continue. Um, now we have to go return to Echot Abu Zarah. Chapter two. Right. Where, where are we told in the Torah that this is it's a sort to do so to you would think it's obvious and it, it is, but uh, it's nevertheless Mefurash in the Torah. Elohim lo thakalil. This is also mentioned um as the, at the beginning of the list of Miswoth, uh, the beginning of Hilhot Abu Dazara, the Pokot Agoyim, Miswa Gimel, Shelo Levadef. Okay, so this the source of this Miswath Lot Ta'ase is the Pasuk in Shemoth Elohim Lot Kalil, Parashat Mishpotim. The whole Yom Wayom, Danim Ha'idim Bechinui. In other words, when the Dayanim in the Betin have such a, a tragic, terrible uh, case that they must adjudicate before them. They don't mention the name of Hashem. They they use a kinui. Yake uh, yose et yose. Yose being a kinui for Hashem. Because it was just a common name. So it's like, you know, saying uh, uh, John or Paul or what have you. Just a common name. Nirmar hadin. But when it is time to decide the, the case, the Bedin has to officially announce a decision. All people who are not required to be present are removed from the from the chamber. And if there are a number of Edim, the uh, most important, most uh, honorable, most uh, reliable of the witnesses is is uh, addressed. And more, Masha Shamata Befirush, state clearly exactly what you heard, because we have to be certain that, that uh, if if this person is Hayav, we have to be one hundred percent certain that what, what exactly he said. So we cannot we cannot use a kinui. And he states it. And the, the Dayanim stand up and rend their clothes as a sign of, of mourning, of having heard such a terrible a terrible statement, which which should uh, shock a person to his core. Is not it is cannot this this garment which has been thus rendered cannot uh, be professionally properly repaired ever. You, one can uh, sew it up in a, in a primitive and not uh, invisible fashion, but what was called invisible mending or something like that, that is not to be done. You require more than one aid, you require two. He doesn't have to repeat the same words, exactly what he heard. He says, I heard exactly what he what he just stated. And if there were many, each is required to confirm that this is exactly what I heard, yes. Without repeating it. Um, 
הלכה יוד דלת, מרדף שחזר בו בתוך כדי דיבור. In other words, that, which is the time, as, as we know, that, that it takes to say three words, Shalom Alecha Rabbi. Uh, within that, in other words, immediately, he, he, he's Megadef and immediately takes it back. Enokalum, Rambam says. The usual Halacha is with regards to to various things is that when a person says something and immediately retracts it it's as if it was not said when it comes to this matter in other words the retraction does not count for anything if he is if we are certain because we have witnesses who state this is what he said and whether he claims to have retracted or not is is not relevant, then he is Hayav Sakila. Misha Gidef et Hashem, Vashem Avodazara. Now this is a slightly different case. He who cursed the name of Hashem, Hasva Shalom, Vashem Avodazara, using the name of some other foreign worship or deity or what have you, he, uh, if there are kanaim, in other words, uh, people who are zealous and jealous for, for Hashem, who are present and hear this, they, they are allowed to strike him down. But if this was not the case, Uvala Beth Din, he's brought before a Beth Din, a non is called. He is not to be stoned. Ad Shi Barech Bashem in Hashemot Hamuhadim. In other words, it, it has to be, the, the name of Hashem has to be, one of the names of Hashem has to be mentioned explicitly. But if the Giduf was heard, as we said, by Khanaim, by people who cannot refrain from reacting to such to such a, a terrible deed, then he may in fact uh, be killed by them. But Abedin will not be able to uh, jud judicially they may not uh, execute him. Any Jew who hears uh, the name of Hashem being cursed, Hayav Likra is Hayav required to rent his clothing as a sign of of mourning. And even if it is not using one of the explicit names of Hashem. And this is the case if he heard this Kalala from uh, a Spoken by a Jew. She is Shmaenam Israel. We had a Shomer, or a Shomer in a Shomer. And this is also true if you heard it related by, by someone else. You did not hear it from the person who uttered this these words. Avala Shomer in Hagoi, but if you hear a non Jew cursing Hashem, Eno Hayav Likra, you are not Hayav to rend your clothing. We're talking about Rav Shake, who was the Sar Savash of San Hariv, the king of Ashur, uh, in the time of Hiskiyahu, as related in Sefer Yeshayahu. Uh, and, uh, and he spoke words of Giduf, Klape Hashem, and it says that. El Yakim and Shevna, who were uh, uh, high officials in the in uh, in the kingdom, uh, was were were present and they heard him say this. They rend, rendered their clothes. Now, why did they do so? If Rav Shakir was a non-Jew, we just said they're not high up to do so. Hazal states that Rav Shakir was a Yisrael Meshumad, 
that he was an apostate Jew. We don't know exactly what that means, in other words, what was his lineage, how that came about, but uh, there were such things. There must have always been such such cases, and uh, and and he was such a person. Rabbi, yes. In the previous halakha, should we assume that all of the other uh, laws about kanaim poginbo apply in this case? For instance, the Megadeth being able to defend himself from the kanai and not being held liable for it. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. In, in the other case, where uh, or can I book when we, yes. when we say that yes. the, the the sinner is allowed to defend themselves against mm -hmm. the can I is yes. the same the yes. case here yes. I, 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 I believe it is the case yes uh, it is it is unreasonable even from a, a, an evil person to expect them to um finding themselves under physical attack not to defend themselves. That that is uh, would be generally be, be considered unreasonable, unless of course we're talking about Israel, which is expected to behave in that fashion by uh, all kinds of uh, all, all manner of individuals around the world. Uh, they, they will always stress that Israel has the right of self-defense, but the moment they do anything at all which smacks of self-defense, uh, they're accused of genocide. So. Uh, Obviously, a person will not stand still and do nothing, and that's that's uh, that's exa that's exactly why kanaim povingo. You have to be very zealous and determined, and you are you are taking a certain risk. In fact, that's that's a part of that this concept of kanaim povingo. Arav, I had a quick question. Yes, regarding uh, someone who uses a foreign god in their cursing of that foreign god when they say i don't know they talk about uh for example jc penny or they use god um and they curse that name how does this what's a gear of that what, what would that look like you say like what would be the gear of megadeth for a foreign god you're you're saying in the same way you refer to hashem but you're just saying it. You know, a, I'm not sure I understand your question. You're 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 asking as follows: If a let's say a Jew mm -hmm. uh, curses uh, Hashem, but he doesn't use any of the names of Hashem that we mentioned earlier, he 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 uses the term God. Yes. Is is he Hayav uh, as a Megadef? So as we learned, he's not Hayav as a Megadef. Um. That's, that, that is that that giduf is not uh, there's a, it's a sort to do so, but it, but he's not hayav uh, technically as as a megadef. He has to use explicitly the, uh, the the names of Hashem that we mentioned. So, so if he is saying b'shem avadaz uh, so he's using a name of another god. Yes. But his intention is referring to Hashem when he's cursing out. When he's making the curse, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what his intention is. If he did not mention, he, he did not use the name of Hashem when when cursing Hashem, then then uh, it, it it is not uh, fit the the parameters of, of this halacha. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So, uh, the last halacha is perik. כל העדים והדיונים סומכים את ידיהם אחד אחד על ראש המגדף. So having heard in the Beth Din, having heard the testimony, the Dayanim have, have now heard the testimony. Both the, the Edim, the witnesses, and the Dayanim, the judges, they place their hands uh, on the head of the Megadef, of this person, who committed this this terrible deed. Well, 
In other words, you are you. Your life is forfeit. Literally, your 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 blood is on your your own head. Your life is forfeit. Shatagaram talacham, and it is your, of your own doing. When bechol harugay bedin mishe somechim ala o elam mechadef biladav, and this is done is only in this case of a mechadef, and not no other capital a crime is this done by the dayanim and the edim. Only in this case, Shneimar was samechu kol hashamayim et yedehem al rosho. This pasuk. Is in Sefer Waikra. Perak Havdalad, chapter 24. So we find the, the Psukim from, uh, from Psuk Yud Gimel here. I'll share it with you. You should be able to see it now. Pasuk Yod Gim Wai Daber Adonai Moshe Lemor Hoseh Et Ham Mechalel El Mihus La Mahane So we're talking about such a person who was Mechalel at Hashem as as related here in Sefer Wa Yikra Wasamichu Chol Hashomayim Et Yedahem Al Rosho So it says here explicitly all those who heard him Place their hands on his head. So this is this concept of semichut yodayim, semichat yodayim, on the on the head of the of the blasphemer, is uh, is mafurashim in this pasuk. And then it goes on to say the the, the pasukim then go on to uh, elaborate somewhat on this concept. Well, bnei Yisrael to the berlim or ish ish. The person who who blasphemes is is guilty and will be punished. When Shem Adunai You see, you see here explicitly it talks about Nokev Shem Adunai You have to you have to use the name of Hashem. Ravom Yirgamuvo Kol Ha'ida. So the, his punishment is also a furash in the pasuk. Kanger Kaizrah Benokvo Shem Yumath. Okay, so with that we can we have completed Perek uh, Sheni, and um, we'll, we'll end here for today. Heyu Baruchim is cool. We are mesla vavchem. Kol ameyahalim ladunoi. Shalom v'nisachon. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.